gospel reading, the story of Thomas, the doubter. Now, how many people out here can say they can, they can actually identify with Thomas? Thomas, the doubter. Doubting Thomas. It's become even a catchphrase in our culture. He's a doubting Thomas. He's a person who does not believe unless he sees. He's a person who does not yet um, hold a belief without proof. How many doubting Thomases are amongst us today? Thomas, I can say, I can identify with because in our modern culture, we are, we fancy ourselves to be so advanced and so, um, how shall we say, ingenious in our ways that we have solved many mysteries of the universe and yet this thing about faith keeps coming up. St. Augustine said that faith is simply believing what you have not yet seen and the fruit of that faith and that belief is seeing yet what you have believed. And so to Thomas we have an encounter, a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus the Christ. Now, if you remember, all through Lent, that we, we went with Christ to the cross, as the disciples did. They went with Christ, and they followed Him to the cross through the scourgings, through the questionings in the temple. And yet, they saw the Lord crucified on a cross. These disciples who were gathered, they saw Him expire upon the cross, this thorny wood cross. His blood flowed as rivers. We all remember that the cross of Christ does not sit between two candles upon an altar, but it was in a place called Golgotha, a place of death, a place of destruction, and a place which was set up as the garbage heap and a place for executions of criminals. In that place, that forsaken place, Christ breathed his last. And disciples witnessing this, witnessing this they saw this, they took his, his body down. They prepared it and put it in the tomb. And yet, we see a Christ who has risen from the dead. The first time the Lord showed up in the midst of the disciples, that Thomas was not there. I think it's very interesting. If you, would, if you look in the Gospel reading, you hear that when Christ announced himself as he appeared in their midst, he said, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. In other words, he's saying, do not be afraid. He's saying, I'm not some ghost or apparition. Do you know who I am? I'm the Lord. I'm Christ. And so we look at this. Now Thomas, who was not within the, the, the hearing of this and the great witnessing of this first appearance, he came later and the disciples said, Thomas, the Lord was here. The Lord was here and you weren't here to see him. Oh, that you were here. And Thomas, in that healthy, doubting spirit that Thomas had, said, Well, I'm not going to believe it until I put my fingers into the wounds of his hand. I will not believe it until I place my hand in his side. I just shall not believe. How many of us would have probably done as Thomas had done, witnessing what he had just witnessed? I can say there would be a lot of us here. Yet... As we said in the great feast of Pascha, if we said that night in the vigil, is that hell had taken a corpse and encountered Christ face to face. Hell had taken a corpse and then encountered God face to face. And so it was when Thomas was amongst them again, Thomas beheld the Lord face to face. An interesting thing that Thomas did, Christ came to Thomas and said, put your fingers here, place your hand here. Now Thomas did not have to do that because what he did, he fell down upon the ground as probably most of us would have done and said, my Lord and my God. How many of us have believed and not seen? How many of us have to see to believe? Every day of your walk upon the earth is the possibility of an encounter with Christ. How many have walked this walk in faith and hope that we will encounter Him face to face? 
I tell you verily that you encounter Christ face to face in every moment that you come across a person in need, you come across a person who is hurting or in despair, you come across a person who comes to you for help. You come to Christ face to face. Will you be Thomas and say, I will not believe until I know for sure, until I see it with my own eyes? Or will you be that who believes and yet has not had to see? Every walk of faith, I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, faith is like this. The faith that is required of us as Christians is that we stand at the precipice of a cliff and we have the faith to take the next step over. This is the faith that is required. This is the faith that, of the faith that if we have the size of the faith of a mustard seed, we find that this is what's required of us. Yet so small, yet so great. And so, like Thomas, we came face to face with Christ. And in everyday life, we should say, my Lord and my God. And so today, as we go through the Feast of Pascha, as we live out this week, the, the, the days to come until Ascension, I want you to meditate upon this in your, in your hearts, in your prayers, that every moment, examine yourself and your faith. Shall we believe in what we have not seen? And shall we have faith enough to hold it in our hearts? Or will we be cynical, as many are, and say that I have to see to believe? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.